Hey everyone, it's Connie here from Say It With Simplicity. Today I'm going to be sharing a tutorial on how to transform pieces of pallet wood into ornaments for Christmas. My husband and I have been creating out of pallet wood for about the last six months or so, and we take things to a small local market in the town where we live. And so these are some of the ornaments that I made recently from some of the reclaimed pallet wood. So this little ornament is a snowflake ornament, um, really simple, um, just made from chunks of scrap. And we drilled a hole in the middle with drill press and I stenciled a, the snowflake on there with a stencil made with my Silhouette Cameo. Um, these two are scroll saw projects. I recently acquired a scroll saw from Habitat Restore in my town and um, this was the first thing that I cut out with it was this star and I later made it into um, a joy ornament. Um, this one is a little mitten ornament and I've made several of these and they're they're easy to cut out with and then we just used a drill press to make the holes for the um, jute hanging um, string. And then here's one that I made yesterday and this was a larger scrap of pallet wood that um, I actually painted. Um, and this is painted with Waverly chalk paint and um, drilled a hole in the top. And this was just, I sort of untangled a piece of rope from a larger piece of rope and used it for my hanger here. Um, this is an SVG that's available on my Etsy site, so if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link in the description box down below. Today I thought I'd work with this piece of pallet wood, and this is a little bit more roughed up than some of the other pieces that are shown here, but I thought it would make a really neat vintage looking ornament. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out to the shop and I'm going to um, clip the corners on it, and clean it up a little bit, drill a hole with the drill press, and we're going to be making it into like a, a grain sack stripe ornament and we'll stencil something across the front. So I've been out to the shop and I um, clipped the corners off of my wood and um, cleaned this up really good with the sander. Um, some of you might like a little bit more rustic look, and so, I mean, that's totally up to you when you do these kind of projects. And then I drilled a hole at the top with the drill press. And now I have some Waverly white paint that I'm going to be using to, to um, just cover this a little bit. And I'm just going to sort of dry brush this on. So off to the side, I've um, taken some Oramask 813 stencil vinyl and I've cut it into strips with my Fiskars cutter. And I'm going to be using these like masking tape on my design. And I'm just going to, to place it on the ornament um, just sort of eyeballing it here. And if I pull it down kind of tight, it helps it to, um, me to, you know, keep it a little bit straighter. And I'm not going to really worry about perfection here too much, but... Maybe I am. And then I have a couple pieces. This is was cut at an eighth of an inch with my Fiskars cutter. And then I cut this at a half an inch. And really the half an inch is to just give me a little extra room. For when I'm stenciling. I'm 
and hopefully I have this pretty straight. And I'm just going to make sure that these are down pretty tight on the edges here. And now I'm going to go in here. I have a little bit of red. Uh, this is Craft Essentials paint from Joanne. And I've had that around for a long time. It's pretty thick, and so I think it'll work well for the stencil. And I'm just going to um, dab off some paint with a makeup sponge here. And I think it's okay to not have it just completely covered. I think that um, that will help give it a little bit more of that antique look. So now I have all my red painted. Maybe I'll just go over one little spot here. And I'm going to just grab my tape and take it off. And I think that looks cool. Sort of the look that I was going for. And maybe I'm not quite perfect on my lines, but I think it turned out pretty good. So now I'm going to make a stencil um, to put some words on here. I will be back when I'm ready to do that. So before I put my stencil on, I'm just going to go in here with a little bit of 150 grit sandpaper and just rough this up a little bit. Give this a little bit more vintage distressed look. And I don't know if you remember, but this wood had a little bit of a, a gray over here. And so that's showing through a little bit now that I've done a little bit of sanding. Okay, so weeding and placing a script font is, for something this small, is a little bit difficult. But it is doable. And so I'm just going to place my stencil... on here. But I'm going to go in here now with a little bit of black paint and I debated about doing like a gray but we're just gonna go ahead with the black and you want to go really real really really lightly because you don't want the bleeds under the stencil and especially with something this small and sometimes what I like to do is actually tape off these edges because I've actually accidentally 
got the paint over there. But since this is a rustic thing, I'm not going to worry about it too much. And I'm just going to go back in here and fill in just a little bit more. I can give it a little bit of extra pressure now that I sort of have the edges. Okay, so I'm all done painting, and this is drying quickly. And I'm going to go in here and just grab the edge of my stencil. Okay, so I have everything weeded and I'm just going to pick this up. You can see that these letters are crisp even with the rough pallet wood and um, being so tiny. I mean, the middle of that E is just like basically a pin head's width, um, you know, and so you really can see how crisp and and that that you can get these letters even though you're doing something really small and so that's it guys um, the vinyl that I used for this was the 631 and of course the grain stri stripe vinyl that I used was the Oracle 813 I just used um, makeup sponges that I picked up at Walmart. And what I do then is I, you know, sometimes I'll just clip these with a the scissors and then I can kind of reuse them so that I get the most out of them that I can. But that's all there is to it, and I think this turned out really cute. I'm going to go ahead and put some rope on this, and I'll be back in a second. And there you have it, our ornaments all done. I tied a square knot at the top, and I like how this turned out, and I hope you do too. If you like this project, please give me a thumbs up, and um, if you'd like to see more videos, just hit that subscribe button, and you'll be notified when new content comes out. I thank you for stopping by today and doing this project along with me. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.